Let's, let's actually get it started. Welcome. This is actually a really bitter, bittersweet one. We're not trying to have like 20, 30 minutes of just intro stuff. Long story short, with the beginning of this, is we have changed the name from the Rantcast to the Dead Kings Podcast. We're actually calling ourselves a podcast now. Yep. Um, we're just going to be, there's no concrete um, schedule as to when we'll be doing this. We have some subjects in mind, but life is just kind of crazy right now. Anyway, I am your host, DS Cosplay, joined with your co host, Mooser666 over here. What's up, just, guys? Or just How's Moose. Just Moose. And on the line, we have Forrest, aka the Lazy Drool, the Lazy Pool. Say hi, Forrest, to the nice people. Hello, nice people. And today, we're just going to cut right into it. For a while now, Forrest and Brady have both heard my um, my discrepancies with certain things about Star Wars. And today, we're just talking about what the heck is going on with Star Wars. What? Why is it? Why is it being the way that it is? And not for the reasons that you think. Not for the reasons that you think. Basically... You want to sum it up, Brady? Because you 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 actually saw something today, and you called me up, and you said, "That's it. We need to do this." Yes, I I actually like was at work, and I was watching a video that a friend of mine posted about how people are still calling uh, Ray a Mary Sue, and it just got me down the rabbit hole thinking of the toxicity of people in the Star Wars universe. I'm you know, thank you for letting me start because I was like I was really wanting to just get this out. Um, I'm I'm a Star Wars fan. Uh, more casual than most, but I'm a Star Wars fan. And what I really am not liking about this Star Wars universe, since I've really do, uh, delved more into it. The fandom, you say. Yeah, the, the, fandom. the fandom. Yeah, is uh, that if you? it seems like if you don't agree with someone else's opinion, it's this toxic war. And mm -hmm. I've, only, I've only been a true casual fan, I'll say, for a good minute now. I've always liked him, but gotten as depth in as in-depth as this never before. And now that I have, I want to back out because of there's just so much toxicity. It's like, if you don't agree with someone's opinion, it's immediately that you're wrong mm -hmm. and you, you can't do any right after that. And, and it's like, Holy cow. Well, and, and, and that's the thing. And I, we touched on this before and, and, and Forrest and I, were, so I'd like to say here right now that you Brady Forrest and I, we all grew up with the prequels. Yeah, absolutely. We did. Prequel babies. Prequel babies. We all we all grew up with them. We all loved them. We all had a great time with them. But it, then we also all got bullied for liking them. Oh, absolutely. If back in school, if, if you liked Star Wars or the other Star... Star Trek. Star Trek. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but you were bullied. You were a nerd. And so... Anything well, sci-fi, really. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah, remember I, when it I'd used agree. to be Star Trek versus Star Wars? Oh, yeah. Remember that? That, that, that Oh, yeah. There was some talks. Remember that? Yeah. when it, You remember that, Forrest? I remember. And so so with that being said, I kind of want to jump in and just tell Brady. Because like, Brady's like, well, I'm more of a casual fan. Here's the thing. The, big, the biggest thing I hate seeing as I could, like, your worth in Star Wars is how much you've invested into it. Whether it be, you know, you, the more you spend on Star Wars, the bigger of a fan you are. And, and, you know, it's like a more of a true fan. There's no, like, a true fan. I hate that saying so much. Right. A true fan. I You know, it's like, me, I've spent a good amount of money on Star Wars. Mm -hmm. You and I both now, since we're both cosplaying Boba and Mando. And not to forget the uh, clone troopers. Oh, yeah. The, the troopers, of course. Yeah. The troopers we're going to be doing. So you can't sit there and be like, oh, you're less of a fan because, oh, this or that. Or the thing of, do you know who Revan is? Do you know who this person is? Do you know who that person is? Like, I hate that. A true fan. A fan is someone who... Do you like it? Do you? Yeah. Do you like Star Wars? Cool. You're you a like fan. you like it, then you're a fan. And, right. and that's the thing is, like, it's really hard to have a conversation with fans, you know, certain fans out there, because all they see, they just want to have a fight. They just, you can't sit down and be like, like, yes, like... It, 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 you can't come down and be like, oh, well, do you like, do you like, you know, the sequels? Oh, you like the sequels. You're not a real fan. You obviously don't understand how Star Wars needs to be. You obviously that you obviously this. And it's like, you just say that, Hey, I didn't hate the sequels. Like me personally, I'm not the biggest fan of them. Mm -hmm. I have my issues with them. Right. But if someone else says, oh my gosh, like if it's their introduction to Star Wars, why are you going to try to ruin that? For real, why? I I hundred percent agree. Like, why are you gonna why are you gonna try to say someone, regardless of what they get introduced with, you should just respect the fact that they're a fan with you. And it's like, hey, it's another person who likes this thing. They like a different part of the thing that I like, but they still like it, and they're still you know wanting to learn more about it. Like, there's 
Well, that's the nice thing, right, of our ability to have our own opinions about each uh, of the movies, whether and characters. It's it's by choice what you like and who you like. That's the nice thing is you're allowed to have your opinion, but you don't have to shun or discredit somebody else's opinion just because it doesn't agree with yours. Exactly. And, and that comes to the thing of what I was going to say, too. Is like is like when people are like you know they have the superiority complex. It doesn't even exist. Just because you like the prequels over the sequels doesn't make you any better. Right. Just because Agreed. you like the OT over the prequels doesn't make you any better. Uh, 100%. Like like there was I, I finally get to tell this story. So growing up, um, I had a friend and I I stayed the night. I was I think I was about nine or ten. Okay. I want to say nine nine ten or eleven. And whenever whenever um uh, uh Attack of the Clones came out mm-hmm. and we. I spent the night at this friend's house and this friend loved attack of the clones, right? Loved the attack of the clones. We watched it like 12 times in one night. It felt I remember like. this. Yes. 12 times in one night. My friend was high on it. I, I remember falling asleep and waking up to the menu music of uh, in Camino of that freaking <laughs> movie. I don't hate attack of the clones. I really wish that there was like more. They did a couple things different. I'm not going to be like, Oh, this needs to fit my narrative. For what it is, it's not a, t- like, I don't, it's not a good movie. Like, it really isn't. Like, there's a couple good action scenes, but for the most part, the writing was just bad. In my opinion, that doesn't make it fact. If you disagree with me, that's fine. But at, as a kid, that Geonosis scene, oh my gosh, I love that. But still, after watching it all day and all night and waking up, and we watched it one more time, and this friend's dad came downstairs and just started ripping on Hayden Christensen and ripping on the movie. And as a kid, you don't care about the acting chops. You don't no. care about the love story. As long as it was, as long as it was cool, and you enjoyed the battles and, and the you know the blaster fire and everything, and that's all you really cared about. Now, what were you saying, Forrest? Sorry. No, I was just agreeing with you. Like okay, and and so it, it comes to the it comes down to the to the uh, to the thing too of what I was what how I feel about um, just like if that because that kind of killed Star Wars, not like Star Wars as a whole for me, but it was just kind of like oh. Like this person's mad at me for liking something that he doesn't like. Right. And it's just like, like, why would I want to put another fan through that? Like we grew up being bullied and picked on for this stuff. And now why are we going to do that to each other in our own fandom? This star Wars is supposed to be something that you can get away from reality that you can invest time into that you can invest, you know, you know, emotion into. And just because a couple movies weren't done the way that you, you that yeah. you really wanted to be done. That means everybody else has to dislike them. What are you talking about? Like, yes, this, <laughs> this is like a sub genre of our podcast, like podcast, podcast, the podcast of like the rant cast where we just rip, but it's just like, it's like, it's like my, like my, my nephew. Uh, I want to say he's like five or six years old for the first time ever. He watched a new hope um, a couple months ago. And this kid, like six year old kid, sitting through a new hope. It's like a two hour and 21 minute movie and an old, an two hour old movie. And 20 movie, the least action in any star Wars movie. He yeah. stayed, he stayed glued to the TV the entire freaking time, entire time. And at That's the impressive. end, and at the end he was Twitter pated. He was Twitter. He's like, I love star Wars. Oh my gosh. A lot. The, one of the biggest, the, the, like the, the biggest star Wars movies ever that people hardly even talk about now. If you really think about it, yeah. all, all people are really comparing stuff to is the last Jedi, um, revenge of the Sith and R- rise of Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Those are the three movies that people really only talk about yet. Those are the three movies that, you know, you either loved or you hated and sorry, I have to fix my stuff, but it's just like, it, it's kind of like, okay, so why am I going to like be like, Oh, well, if he ever watches, you know, the sequels, am I getting, you know, get, like, why would it be like, oh, well, you know, Ray, she's actually just a Mary Sue. You know this. She's right. actually, like, why would you, like, the kid is enjoying Star Wars. Well, how would you feel if you were you were enjoying Star Wars? He'll just be like, what's a Mary Sue? Exactly. And, and that's the thing we talked about earlier. Um, I, I remember my first opinions of Ray were you, I didn't hate her, and I didn't necessarily think she was a Mary Sue, but I did think that there was an agenda there with mm-hmm. her character, mm-hmm. um, especially because at the time, you know, there was a lot of the feminist movement going on. And I thought at first that was the purpose of mm-hmm. her character was to empower that the the, fem- the feminist movement that was going on at the time. But I'd never thought of her as a, a, a Mary Sue. And maybe that is the definition of a Mary Sue. I don't know the true definition of a Mary Sue, but I enjoy Ray as a character. My favorite Star Wars, and this is a kid 
me who's grown up i've seen all the movies i have mm-hmm. them right over there on my shelf yeah. in a box set like um, hold on it, let me cu- let me jump in here let me jump mm-hmm. in here so before anybody brings out the pitchforks and the torches i guarantee brady has invested a lot more time and money into star wars as a air quotes casual fan than a lot of hardcore fans because you own a you own a Captain Rex helmet. I don't is it is it in here? No, it's no. not. It's not. You own a Captain Rex helmet. You're gonna be owning a full Mando suit that you're putting together your freaking self. Yep. And soon, if it ever comes out, you're gonna be owning your own lightsaber. Oh yeah, I none definitely want to get it. And it's gonna be Ray's, ironically. Y- yeah. Enough. None of that stuff is cheap. But within that, with that in mind, continue what you were saying. So thank you, thank you. And you're right. And you're right. Like. I invest into what I like and what I think is cool. And I think there's so much in the Star Wars universe, all movies, all the shows, everything, that there is there will be an aspect that I like. Now, this is coming from the kid who's grown up from one through three, who's seen four, five, and six. Like I said, I own them. And mm-hmm. I saw all three of the new movies in theaters with you. I remember we went to mm-hmm. every single one. And my favorite out of all of them was nine. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of people were, are going to be like, what, how, what, what you don't, do you know that right. revenge of the Sith exists? Right. Do you know yep. that Anakin versus Obi-Wan exists? Why do you even like that? Like, here's my thing. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Revenge of the Sith. People are always like nowadays, they're like, oh my gosh, the prequels are, are the best trilogy of Star Wars. Why the heck do they only talk about the Revenge, Revenge of the Sith then? Right. Why do they only talk about Revenge of the Sith and the Anakin versus Obi-Wan? It's really funny. Again, as a prequels baby, who's just sick of having this prequel, me- this mentality of, of of people having this mentality that just because, you know, you have to like the prequels or you're a piece of trash. If you like the sequels more than you like the prequels, you're not a true Star Wars fan. Star Wars is Star Wars. Let's talk facts right now. Right. Seven, no. eight, and nine. Are canon no matter how much you don't want them to be that's yep. going to trigger a and lot that, of people and that's something we talked about earlier today too is whether you like it or not whether, whether you, you think you're the ultimate deciding power or not as a fan you're not exactly star wars made seven eight and nine which means star wars decided uh, what was now canon. disney made star wars at seven eight nine and i don't think that it's like oh my gosh is it really you're if you're ooh, okay i'm sorry i just i okay blood pressure blood Take pressure blood poo. blood poo. pressure but so the problem with it is, is that like, it's okay to not like seven, eight, nine. It's not Absolutely, okay. It's yeah. not okay to, to, to bully other people for liking seven, eight, nine. Exactly. Like, like, okay, like, let's talk, let's talk real quick. And I'm sure everyone's like, oh my gosh, you know, you, you know, she's terrible. Rose Tico, Kelly Marie Tran. Mm, yep. In defense, I'm going to defend Kelly Marie Tran. I'm going to defend Rose Tico right now. What is everyone's issue with Rose Tico? Just what that she gave Finn a weird kiss and she and she did the little thing where she crashed into Finn before he could sacrifice himself. How did that that kept Finn alive? Yeah. That I, kept Finn alive. We get more Finn. Everyone's like, oh, Finn deserved better. Finn deserved better. I am so freaking curious to know how up in arms they would have been. If Finn had died. If Finn had died. Like in my in my personal opinion, at that moment, I think it would have been a great send-off for Finn. But at the same time, just seeing where he went, he really didn't go anywhere. But again, but this is just, I'll get to this in a second, the potential of, of what we could get. But so here's my thing with, with Rose. There's literally nothing wrong with her. Mm-hmm. People are like, she's a cancer cell. She's this, she's that. Why? Why? Because you just like didn't, know, you didn't like her? Yeah, like because you, you didn't, like you just it's didn't okay approve to, of where she came from or what, what her involvement in the story was. Like, like it's, it's okay. You didn't. It's okay. You don't like her. But what's a valid reason as to why you don't like her? What did she do? What did she do? Like she was a fangirl of Finn's and she was like, when you first meet her, she, her sister just died. So she's crying. Her sister just freaking died. And then she meets Finn who is proclaimed as this war hero who helped destroy star killer, star killer base. Mm-hmm. She meets Finn. Then she finds out Finn's trying to run away and desert. So yeah. she is a security person and you see, and they say that she's in charge of keeping people from, from jumping ship. Mm-hmm. And what does she do? Yeah. Well, because they'll go rat. Yeah. Yeah. She stops Finn from jumping. She ship. does her freaking job. That's all that she's she doing. Tases his bitch ass. Yeah, she tases him. Watch your language, by the way, Forrest. Okay. Anyway, um, but she she does her job, and then at the end, she fights side by side with Finn to try to stop the first order. Other than the kiss, and yes, people want to argue the whole Canto bite thing. Okay, whatever. If you want to say that that is all of Rose's fault, then you're not blaming blaming John Boyega because guess what? He was in that scene too. Yep. 
He was in the horse chase too. Yep. Like, how are you? Like, it's like. Didn't he push for it more aggressively than Rose did anyway? I, I can't remember. I'd have to go back and watch it. But it's like, what did she do? Like, she didn't. Like, it's kind of the same thing with Jar Jar. Jar Jar. Well, okay, never mind. Jar Jar is the reason that what happened after episode one, after episode <laughs> three happened. But, yeah, you know, but, yeah. you know, but it's just like. It's like what 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 did she do? Why don't you like her? Because there's a bunch of toxic freaking Star Wars YouTubers out there who are saying, "Oh, well, it's Kathleen Kennedy pushing her agenda and she's doing this and doing that." And you're just regurgitating yeah. what those toxic Star Wars fans are or what those YouTubers are saying because it it no one can come up with a like I had I was talking to someone on Instagram. We were actually having a really nice conversation. And I was like, "Why don't you like Rose Tico?" Like what's like essentially that was the like I, we started getting talking about Rose and I was just like, "Why well, what is people's issues with her?" And they were like they were like, "Well, it's because people I could see that people are saying that she was people were pushing an SJW feminist agenda." And I was like, "Okay, but did Rose do something better than a man?" Cause right. like, did she outshine somebody? Did she, what did she, what did she do? And I didn't get that vibe from her as a character. My vibe from her yeah, was no. that she was a character. She's just a character. There's, there was no She's political agenda against the, against the new empire order it was the first order. Yeah. Like she, that's what she's doing. And it's just, that's all she wanted to do. And it, it just, it blows my mind. Cause now moving, moving on from Rose, like I just, I just, if here's the thing, you cannot call yourself a Star Wars fan and then go attack the person that brings this care, this you, helps bring this universe to life. You just can't. Just like everyone out there who is saying, "Oh, George Lucas is a prophet and a god and this and that." I have my opinions on George Lucas. I have my opinions on him. But how are you going to sit there and be like, "Oh, we love George Lucas so much," yet th- those same people? who are crying and moaning and, and wanting to petition or, or, you know, or saying George Lucas needs to bring, bring Star Wars back. They're the ones currently doing to jo- doing to Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm and Disney to what toxic fans were doing before. Forrest, what are you doing over there? Oh, sorry. So we can't have, we can't, can't we have can, nice things. Can't have nice things. Be quiet over there, Forrest. Anyway, um, well, so so moving on, like you were saying, moving on from that and bringing up the George Lucas thing, um, one thing that really frustrates me is how involved and how much people let the politics of actors, directors, and owners of the company affect their opinions on something. Can, oh, yeah. you, can you not, like, I'm sorry, when I go into a movie, I don't go into a movie... Some of you do. Some of you really, 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 really like your specific directors. Johnny Depp, he's one of my favorite actors, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't go into a specific movie and go, all right, well, the director of this movie, he did something on his Instagram that really pissed me off. So I'm not going to like this movie. I'm just going to not, you know, or you know what I mean? Like someone does something that just because you don't approve of it, you're instantly going to just dislike everything in the movie it's like me and my little brother growing up he liked peas i liked corn he we both think each other didn't like the other because the other liked it so you're doing something just because you don't like a specific person is ridiculous and i think that's where some of that toxicity spawns from well and i I understand where people come from with that where they're like hey i don't like what this person did or what they said or whatever they don't agree with it I can completely understand someone not wanting to support that person's work. I know it hurts everybody else involved, but I can understand people being like, oh, I don't like what this person said or did. I'm not going to support that. And then them voicing, you know, someone's like, well, are you going to watch this? No. You know, if it gets to the point of the person's asked enough, they're like, here's my stance on this. I'm not going to watch said movie for the simple fact that said person is involved. That's me. But you should not go on to this that person that you don't like's Instagram and start harassing that person oh, and, and attacking that yeah, person. Absolutely not. Like it's okay. Like I don't see something wrong with if you don't like a director or you don't like an actor or something like that. I got something in my mouth. If you don't like a director, you don't like an actor. It's fine to you know stay away from that piece of content because you don't like that person. You have that freedom. You have that freedom. That's my opinion on it. You agreed, just shouldn't yeah. try to ruin everybody else's experience with it because you don't like it. Right. Agreed. Yeah. And that's the big the thing only here. Time that they recently tried doing that was with the solo movie. It wasn't anything political. They're like, we don't want a solo movie. We don't want to watch it. 
Well, and then too, exactly. And then with that, the, the, the backlash from the last Jedi solo is a, I think in my opinion, attack me, if you will, I think I liked solo more than rogue one. I mm. had, I was more entertained by solo than rogue one because rogue one, if you really think, think about it, if you really skim it back to what they played it really safe, all people really talk about to me at least. And that I see about rogue one is the Vader hallway scene and um and uh the third act oh that's, you're always quoting saw Gerrera. yeah like yeah. that's 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 all that they even talk about it's kind of like revenge of the sith people only ever talk about the anakin versus obi-wan fight mm-hmm. i posted a tiktok just basically because i i revenge of the sith has the best opening scene out of any star wars movie to me right best opening scene no one talks about the yeah. battle over coruscant no one talks about it. Mm-hmm. And so it's it, it just blows my mind. Now, I'm not going to give our opinions on the Anakin versus Obi-Wan fight in this episode because we're going to do that in another one. Um, but it just it just blows my mind that, that people are doing what was doing, what was happening to them years ago during the prequels. Right. 15 to 20 years, those same people who are complaining about the sequels now are going to be calling calling Ryan Johnson and JJ Abraham JJ Abrams JJ Abrams JJ Abrams profits and stuff like that they're going to be gushing. Okay, here's the tr- my my opinion. Well, no, here's the here's a fact. Here's a fact about 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 George Lucas' Star Wars. He obviously just didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. If you're going to be mad at Star Wars being the way it is now, if you're upset about Star Wars being the way it is now, be mad at George Lucas. No one held a gun to his head and said, "Hey, sell this." Well, I'm pretty sure the fans did. And we're like sending him these death threats and all that stuff. George Lucas is an idiot. Da, 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 da. The 15 to 20 years that we had the prequel content, we got literally nothing. Cause I'm just sh- like, not literally nothing. We got the prequels. We got the clone wars. We got a couple games. That was about it. Yeah. Of books and comics. Yeah. Books and comics. But if you really look at it for us, how many people are reading those books and comics? How many people? Only the really dedicated ones. Like how, how many people, instead of going to, we're not going to name them, but certain star Wars YouTubers go into their channel and listening to them, read the books instead of supporting star Wars and buying the, that George Lucas content. How many of those people are actually buying that content? Like how many people actually are reading the books? How many people out there who are like, Oh, the Knights of the old Republic needs to be canon. Revan needs to have this. Revan needs to have that. How many actually played Knights of the old Republic? Actually, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> like, like I played a little bit of it, and I couldn't bump with it because I did not like the controls. But anyway, um, the we're getting so spo- so spoiled with Star Wars stuff right now. Oh, absolutely. So spoiled. Three new movies. We're getting two handfuls of, of TV shows coming out. More books. More games that are going to be happening. More Just games. A plethora. That, we're getting so much. We got two lands, two full on lands at Disney parks for this stuff. What did we get at Disneyland? When George Lucas was in charge, Star Tours, that was about it. Yeah. And the Jedi a training a Jedi Training Academy thing. That was it. Mm-hmm. That was it. You could tell George fell out of love with Star Wars for the simple fact that he was getting death threats. He was getting attacked. He was this and that. Like, again, if you want to be mad at anyone for Star Wars being the way it is, be mad at George Lucas. Well, and, and that's the thing is um, we've, we've talked about this before, too, where you're talking about the dude who created this. The dude that came up with everything, right? Where it spawned from, the little idea that it spawned from, he created that. How are you going to get mad at his idea that he came up with? How are you going to tell him it's wrong? It's his idea. He it, came exactly. up with it. Yeah, exactly. like, thank you for thank you for saying that because I'm cutting you off. Okay, I'm, the, I'm the cut fact off. of the matter here's cut off. here's the thing. The fact of the matter is George Lucas, and I can play the soundbite if I can find it. George Lucas, let me see. Hold on. Hopefully this doesn't hang up on Forrest real quick. Let me see. George Lucas, hold on. Wait, Hush falls over the crowd. Okay, so George Lucas, let's see if I can play it. Um, um, I don't know what happened. My computer freaked out. Um, let's see. Um, no, that's not it. Let's see. Was simply to do a high adventure film that I loved when I was a kid. Yeah. With meaningful I can hear it. That's okay. psychological themes. And 
uh, you know, I don't know what I felt. It was like a really cockamamie idea. So I, I did that. But, it, you know, again, seeing the film tonight and seeing it when we were shooting in various places after start after the first one. Hold on, I got to skip into it. Seeing all the kids. Let's see. Girls, there, there it is. is. You know, seeing all the kids. Let's see, here it is. You know, it's hard for people to realize, and I'm not supposed to say this, and I wasn't supposed to say it then, but, you know, it's a film for 12 year olds. Hear those cheers? Yep. Th it, there it is, right, right there, right there. Sorry it took me so long to get to it. But George Lucas straight up said, it's a film for 12 year olds. And if you disagree with that, after you were just saying George Lucas is the prophet, George Lucas needs to come back. You can't sit there. Like, it's the fact. George Lucas created for 12-year-olds. Oh, well, it deals with, with human trafficking, sex trafficking, and slavery, and this and that. So does the Prince of Egypt, and it's made for kids. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> my gosh, dude. Yeah. Like, so is the Prince of Egypt. That, the Prince of Egypt has one of the most the darkest scenes with, with playing with the big boys now. One yep. of the creepiest scenes ever. So yep. and guess what else is a, is a, is a, is a show for twelve year olds? What? Never ending story. Oh, that never ending story yeah. gets very very dark. Kill. Yes. No, we're not going there. Kill shot. But yes, just because, just like you can't, you're obviously offended that he's like, oh, it's a it's a film for twelve year olds because it is. Yep. It is George Lucas, your lord, your lord and savior has said it's a film for twelve year olds, and it's if you can't accept that, that's your fault. Right. Well, no, it deals with this. It, 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 it doesn't matter what it, it deals with at the end of the day. It's the what dude, he says. George who, Lucas said it. Yep. George it's Lucas said it. He intended it to be. And that's exactly the, that's the part that just gets me still. Like just thinking about it more and more. How are you gonna tell the creator of something, the one who spawned the idea? Someone may have never come up with this idea. We may have never gotten Star Wars if George Lucas didn't bring it into fruition. So how are you gonna tell the man? who brought it to fruition that he's wrong and this and that and the other. It's his. You know what? If he wanted to make pink lightsabers, he could do it. And it would I be... I think he did. No, no, he didn't. He didn't. Well, you know what I mean. He could <laughs> he could make them wear ballerina costumes and it would be canon, okay? It's kind of like what you said. He could say that lightsabers were powered by Pop-Tarts and you have no choice but to accept it. <laughs> like, it, it like, it's just I didn't like, say that. I forgot well, about like that. It, well, and it's just, it just blows my absolutely loving mind. The, the fact of two is like, no matter who directed or who came up with the story of Star Wars a new Star Wars movie, a new Star Wars something. There's a ton of people out there, myself included, who are pushing for Starkiller to become canon. Yep. There's a ton yep, of people I out, would love that. There's a ton of people out there who do not like Starkiller. There's a ton of people who do not like the Force Unleashed games. There's a ton of people like... that. Yeah, there's, there's still... Go and there's still going to be a ton of people at the end of the day, whether you want to accept it or not, who are going... would hate what George Lucas would come up with if he did a new trilogy. Right. And here's the thing. All these people who are saying, oh, well, Disney's going to retcon this and this and that, and George Lucas is coming back, it's over. It's not, it's, it's, it's over. It's, it's not happening for the simple fact is the dude bought it. They sold it. They sold, they bought, Disney bought it for $6 billion. Yep. You think Six, George Lucas wants that back? Just because, just because, no. just because certain big Star Wars YouTubers come up with some weird idea that George Lucas is going to come back to clickbait your sorry behind doesn't mean that it's going to happen. I'm sorry. You're, like, here's the thing, too. Theories when it comes to Star Wars. Star Wars theories. Yep, I was ready. I was ready for this one. This one. When, when it comes to this stuff, that's the most self-harm you can do to yourself as a Star Wars fan. Going in, coming up with your own ideas and listening to people's Star Wars theories that you believe that narrative so much and you and you want that to be happen so much you're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, it's so, okay to have those theories, but don't rely on them to come to fruition. Exactly. That that's, that's why that's why like when I when we when The Force Awakens came out, I came went in with I was like, "Oh, this would be cool. This would be cool. This would be cool. This is what they should do." And they did none of it. And then the next two movies from 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 The Force Awakens to now, I've always gone in with, to to a Star Wars movie not caring what's going to happen not expecting anything, and I have a good time. Oh, what, ma what makes a good Star Wars movie to me is if it keeps me entertained, if I'm not bored during it, if I don't fall asleep. The Rise of Skywalker, in my opinion, the best out of the trilogy, it did not, I, I did not fall asleep at all. Here's the thing when it comes to all that good stuff, when it comes to Star Wars theories, when it comes to that and this and that, and how you think a movie should have been done. 
there's been a couple people in the past like five or six years that I've ran by how I would have done certain things outside of the two of you. And they bombed. Like people were like, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't like it. And it was kind of like, Oh, so imagine if your version of this movie came out and we're going to cover what we'll do is one of these rant casts, new idea, or one of these, these podcasts, we'll go through the air quotes, original script for episode nine. Mm-hmm. We'll go through that and we'll just get, I, I went through it one time with force, but we weren't recording. Um, but anyway, right. imagine you're in charge of Star Wars. <laughs> imagine you're in charge of Star Wars and you put your, your version of it out there. Then people come to you and send you death threats and say how you need to never be allowed around Star Wars again. And this and that, this idea that you've come up with in your head. And also keep in mind that Disney, a private company, an empire, if you will, gets to tell you how, what is going to be in your movie and what is not going to be in your movie. Yep. You're controlled. And well, and that's the thing you look at it too. For every theory you dislike or for every concept of, of a movie you dislike, someone dislikes yours. Yeah. Someone doesn't like yours. Like it's like yours isn't going to be like, like some groundbreaking thing. Like, yes, here's the thing too. There are a big group of people out there who don't like the Mandalorian. Jeez. There's a big group of people out there who did not like season seven of the Clone Wars, who don't like the Clone Wars in general. And that's completely fine. That's Absolutely. fine. You're okay. You're, you're fine. It's like, yes, the Mandalorian is really popular. And everyone's like, oh, Dave Filoni and John Favreau need to be in charge of Star Wars. That's not the case. That's not the case. Yep. As much as people. hired on to do a project. Exactly. They, there was this, there was a, a, an idea. There was an idea. And they were hired to bring this to light. And so it, it just blows my mind how, like, again, when people when I ask people questions, like I'll be like, Oh, well, you know, like how come you think revenge of the Sith is the best star Wars movie? Everyone always just says to me, at least Anakin and Obi-Wan, the opera scene. And that's about it. Yeah. And, and the biggest thing, here's the thing. What, what's what the prequels have turned into is that everything that's like kind of wrong with star Wars, the prequel, the, with the prequels, it's just been turned into a meme. Yep. I love prequel memes. I love them. I make them. Yeah. And so, it's just funny that like everyone loves the pre it's kind of like what's happening with, with um the Raimi trilogy with Spider-Man. Okay. That the Spider-Man memes are coming out and everyone's like, Oh, well they're not that bad. 20, 30 years later, they're not that bad. Yeah. We, you know, Tobey Maguire is the best Spider-Man when 15 years ago you would have been, you know, freaking burned at the stake for saying Tobey Maguire is the best Spider-Man. Right. They're like, Oh what? Toby crying his eyes out. Spider-Man. Huh? Or even a good Spider-Man in general. Yeah. Like, right. if you if you liked Tobey Maguire at all, Tobey Maguire at all, at any part of being Spider-Man, oh, you're, he's trash, he's trash, he's the worst Spider-Man ever. Da, 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 da. And it's just, that's what's happening with this, is like, you know, 15 years ago, everyone was, and I have to keep saying it, because people are just missing the point, that history is just bound to repeat itself. Right. Well, and that's, and that's the thing, is it almost seems like a generational thing, right? So 15 years ago, the prequels came out, and you, uh, the the older guy, older folks that saw the first ones didn't like it, and then now the the sequels have come out, and nobody likes the people from the prequels don't like those, and it, it, it's always funny to me how everyone thinks they can do it better. Yeah, everyone thinks they can do it better. Well, here's my question to you, and this may come off a little bit aggressive, but let's see you do it better. You know, I'm sorry. You're not the one up there getting paid the millions of dollars to create. And you're, you're never not. going to be. Right, exactly. That's no, what you have to accept. Right, and I'm not trying to, to, to try and bring toxicity to this. I'm trying to say, quit being so toxic about it. You're not up there. You might never be. Don't, don't be negative about it. Take it for what it is. Enjoy it for what it is. It's okay to have problems with a movie. No movie is perfect. No movie. I'm gonna. I'm calling it oh, out the, right uh, there. You're wrong there. Well, oh, oh, what's what's perfect? Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. That's the, that's that's a perfect movie. Um, it's a perfect movie. I, okay. You can't t- tell me one thing that's wrong with Indiana Jones and the uh, Last Crusade. Maybe I could find something if I rewatched it, but that's not the point. Tell me right now. Okay, you're staring at me with uh, an, an, a tell vicious me intent. Right this there's, second, there's, what's wrong? You know, there's nothing wrong with that movie. Exactly because it's the perfect. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just no, kidding. but you know what I mean. Like, there's 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 no such thing as in my 
true opinion, and I learned this taking a film class, that there's no such thing as a perfect movie. And everyone thinks they could do it better, right? But you're going off of something. You're going off of movies that already exist yeah. that you're basing what you could make better. Okay, give yourself a blank board. You can't use the name Ray. You can't use Finn. You can't use okay. any of the and people also, that and have also, come out. And also, keep in mind, keep in mind that there, I, I read this, don't know how fact it is, but George Lucas put contingencies in place that they couldn't use Mara Jade or a couple of the other people like um, like uh, uh, the offspring. Who are the offspring, Forrest, of... Uh, Jason and Jane and Solo are... And Anakin Solo are obviously Han and Leia's kids, and then we have Ben Skywalker. Okay, so I don't know how, 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 um, how true this is, and just taking it with a grain of salt, but imagine you can't use them either. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. You cannot use any current existing Star Wars character... Anything. ...in your film. Nothing similar. Noth- no, like, you can't use anything from the existing Star Wars universe right now, other than the very basic things, like some ships, yeah. some animals, and that's pretty much it. No characters of any similar. You have to do go from complete blank slate and then tell me you can do better because I guarantee... you don't have a template. Right, exactly. I guarantee you can't, and I guarantee you're going to have the same amount of toxic people that are uh, targeting uh, George Lucas, and what's the, what's the other gal's name? Her name's Kathleen Kennedy. Kathleen Kennedy. You're going to have the same people tar- that target them targeting you for yep. for making a film that they're not going to agree with but you think is perfect. Well, let me let me come in here real quick and 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 say this, okay? How about this? Other than what these Star Wars YouTubers are spewing about Kathleen Kennedy, why they don't like her? What's your reason for not liking Kathleen Kennedy? What's your original reason? She's pushing SJW agenda. Okay, other than wow. that, she ruins st- like I was I was legitimately having a conversation with someone and I was like, if you really want to look at it, like I was talking, uh, you had a message with someone on TikTok and I was basically talking to him and saying, well, hey, like, what's your, what's your issue? And they're like, oh, well, she was pushing SJW, SJW agenda and she ruined the, the sequel trilogy. And I was like, OK, that's your opinion of that. She ruined the sequel trilogy because a lot of people like it. They're just they just don't openly say it because they'll get shark attacked by prequel fans. Right. And as again, a- as a prequels baby, I hate to see that we were going through this. Growing up, why the heck are you going to turn your guns on your own people? You but become anyway, the very thing you swore, swore to, to destroy or destroy. So, Jeez, I, I told you, you're I not a real up. Star Wars fan. You're right. I'm leaving. You, you're not. Get the heck out you of can here. Have all my get Star Wars crap. Get the heck out of here. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but it's just like it's like this. Okay, so I was talking to, to this person, and they were saying like, "Well, she ruined this, this, this." I'm like, "Okay, but she also." Was brought us, you know, the Ahsoka show, Acolytes, Mandalorian, the Obi Wan show. We're get uh, Rangers of the New Republic. We're getting, you know, a season bunch of, seven of Clone Wars. season seven of Clone Wars. We're getting. Oh well, that was all. That was all Dave Filoni. Dave Filoni's a fucking director and a writer. She reached out. Not there was there, there was literally, literally an interview that her and Dave Filoni did that she, they both talked and said, "Yeah, Kathleen brought me on to do this." Yep. Yeah, and maybe she saw the error of her ways with the sequels and was like, "Hey, maybe this is what we need to do." Right, I need to bring in I, someone I, I need who's to, yeah. better at it. And so, and so, you know, she brought us all this stuff, and the cat was like, well, she had nothing to do with any of that. And I'm like, well, if you look up who the executive producer is on all this stuff, it's Kathleen Kennedy. Mm-hmm. On all of these shows coming out, she is involved in some way, shape, or form. And you're only going to talk about her when it has to deal with the sequels weird weird that you can't see past the sequels but yet all these people were well, i hate the sequels i'm not watching anything else you're gonna you're watching the mandalorian you watch season seven of the clone wars you're gonna watch everything else that comes out right yeah you are you're, you're gonna sit there and say you're not but you are and you know what here's my that's opinion. because you're a star wars fan and that's what you're supposed <laughs> to do as a fan is support damn it, it regardless what <laughs> happens and that includes each other as fans and you know what i i know that if kathleen kennedy was the one that directed the last three movies solely Good for her. She's she's not even a director. She's a producer or produce. She's not produce. She's not. She's not a director. I'll tell you right now that between all three movies, I thoroughly enjoyed all of them in some way, shape, or form, quite in depthly. And one big thing that really sticks out for me in movies is the little hints to other things in the Star Wars universe. And I think between all three movies, we see hints of everything that happened in previous movies, mm-hmm. from 
Um, and then in, in stuff that's in the books and the comics, there were hints to everything and other shows. What was that ship that you said you saw in number, uh, in, in nine where the ghost, the ghost I'm gonna throw that up. shows up. I, I didn't, the, I didn't well, know what the ghost was, well, so, but there it was. It yeah. was there. She, she, Someone put in enough thought into adding those subliminal things into the movie. Why can't you appreciate that? How do you not appreciate that? I, I get with people with the ghost, in my opinion, too, is that if they're going to keep... Because the ghost is a Disney thing. It's the Dis, mm. it's Disney's Millennium Falcon. Oh, okay. They, it was, it's from Rebels. They like to shoehorn it in. It's kind of like a wink and a nod. My personal opinion is they need to do a payoff with that. Harrison Dula needs to show up in live freaking action and do something with the ghost. It's like... It's like, why do you keep putting it in our face if you're not going to do anything with it? Now, now, with that said, let's let's go into into the harsh reality of the sequels is that there's a lot of stuff that I don't like about them. There's uh, there's a lot of stuff that Forrest doesn't like about them, but we're not going to like we're not going to go every single day and try to find anyone. Google Ray or Instagram search Ray Skywalker, Ray's and Ray Sue, Ray's not a Skywalker. The sequels aren't canon. It's like the fact is they are canon. Ray is a Skywalker. I'll be the first one to say I don't like. I like how Ray is a Skywalker. Like I wanted her to be a Skywalker for the simple fact. If you boil it down, with nothing more than she's continuing the Skywalker legacy. She's continuing it. Well, she didn't earn the name. She didn't that. She didn't that. Well, she's essentially adopted into it. Well, Luke and Leia never openly adopted her. If you see the camaraderie between Ray and Leia in Episode Nine before Leia dies, you can obviously freaking see that that's the dynamic that they were Agreed. going for. Maybe it was poorly executed. Maybe it wasn't written well. I don't know, like Anakin and Padme's relationship. But still, you know, it's, <laughs> not to it's, not to bring up anything specific. You know, bad but. bad writing is bad writing. It's a thing, but it's still at the end of the day. Obviously, you see the the. The, the Force ghosts give their blessing, essentially, and she takes on the name of Skywalker. It's fine. It's kind of like how Jango was adopted as a foundling, how Grogu was adopted by Mando. Adoption is a freaking thing in Star Wars. I'm sorry just because it didn't line up with your agenda that you don't like it. And at the end of the day, just let people enjoy stuff. Right. Like, let them enjoy stuff. If you don't like it, you do not have to pay attention to it. Now, here's the thing, too. Look at this. The Mandalorian. So much fan service. Mm-hmm. Someone who was cosplaying man, man repainted Boba Fett and <laughs> Din over there. Now you yep. can't see us anymore. But there was so much fan service there. Bo Katan came in and just literally dropped some exposition and dipped. Yep. Like she like they she didn't need Mando's help getting that light cruiser or getting that 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 ship yep. with and, all the guns and stuff. And same with Ahsoka. Like, yeah, like in and, out. Well, and that's it. Well, yeah. And like what did Mando really even do? When he when he went to help Ahsoka with the magistrate, what did he do? Ahsoka took out all the guards. Mando just w- held the door. He distracted that he, one guy. Yeah, he will. He was well. He was just holding guard. He wasn't even distracting. He was just he was just standing guard so the guy didn't get to go in there. And even if the guy went in there, Ahsoka would have just killed the dude anyway. Yeah. Like so. I guess what I'm saying right now is just like there's a lot of stuff in Star Wars. There's a lot of things that aren't aren't within continuity and a lot of things that could have been done better. But instead of dwelling on those things and being making that the sole thing you think of while you're watching the movie, think about something else. Watch the movie, take it frame by frame. Oh, Luke suckled on a freaking nasty space cow's nipple for milk. Okay. Moving on. Right. Instead of that's not Luke Skywalker. And you really think like, it's just that simple thing of Luke's like, I personally think, in my personal opinion, if J.J. Abrams would have done all three movies, we would have gotten a good Luke Skywalker. He built him up so much, we would have gotten a good Luke Skywalker, but we got the Luke Skywalker that we got, and that's the Luke Skywalker that we're sitting with. And also, in my personal opinion, okay, I I know I'm kind of steamrolling this, (laughs) but it doesn't help when the actors are also feeding into the the toxicity. Oh no, 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 no. I love no, Mark that's... Hamill. I love Mark Hamill, but he him openly being like, well, I don't like this. It's, it's okay. Like he's saying, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. But you don't see him out here calling Ray and Mary Sue and da, 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 and this and that. It's like, well, you can't use Mark Hamill as a freaking, you know, argument cl- crutch when he's just saying he wasn't happy with something. It's like, well, that should speak volumes to this or that. Mark Hamill may not like it, but I like it. Right, exactly. There's some. There always is. Gonna I'm be not something. Mark Hamill. Right, exactly, and that's the point. You're not always gonna like everything you see. You're you're not. It's feasibly impossible to like everything you're gonna see, at least for every single person. It's impossible to make every single person happy. So instead of trying to look for absolute perfection 
enjoy the movie for what it is. Taylor, you and I and, and Forrest, I know you've probably learned this too, but at least for Taylor and I, we have learned you go into every movie, every movie with zero expectation yep. and you come out way more entertained. It, way more entertained and way more happy. Exactly. Especially with like, for example, I can go on and on about my rants with Pirates of the Caribbean and the flaws oh, with, yeah. with, yeah, don't even get me started. But I went in with no expectations. And guess what? Even in my least favorite one, there are moments that I quote and there's funny moments. Yep. And I appreciate it for that. I might not like it, but you don't see me going out here on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, MySpace, whatever it Everything. is. Everything. Don't worry about it. Out on, uh, you know. Don't MySpace. worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Out on everything, ruining or trying to bully people who like the movie that I don't like. Exactly. Like, yeah, it, it's just, yeah, yeah. I it, can't. It, it's, yeah. it's a simple freaking concept, guys. Like, you don't bully if if don't bully out at all, first of all. Yeah. But how wrong, are right. you going to bully when you were bullied? Exactly. Don't become the thing that you hated and sought to destroy. It swore to destroy. Sought. Out again. Yep, I'm out. Get out. But you know what I mean? Just don't <laughs> be shower. that person. Go shower, Brady. Go, don't be that person. Just don't. It's, it's simple. If I can do it, Taylor can do it. Forrest can do it. Y'all can do it, and it, it's not hard. And well, and it, it just makes me like to my because we're 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 winding down on time here, but it just it kind of just like it, it it makes me sad when I go to uh, certain creators that I really used to like and I used to enjoy, and I just see that they're just spewing toxicity and two face remarks, and that they're also um you know in their comment section it's nothing but prequel quotes and. Like, there's nothing wrong with that, but when the people are like, like, people people are saying, oh, we need to march down. Like, okay, there was literally someone, I believe, oh, it was it was when um, a certain creator was had a heated exchange or some drama, Twitter drama, with um, someone that had to do with uh, Disney, and I went to a subreddit to kind of get more information as to what was happening, and a couple people said, well, where it's like, loads Glock, where does this guy live? Jeez. Those and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, what? Laugh. Like, they're like, like, I'm sorry, that's not a freaking joke. Yeah, like, that's not a joke. Like, you're threatening to kill. Like, you're, you're trying to make you're going to kill someone. Like, what? Like, you're, over Star. It's Wars. like you're sounding like those people who made death threats to Ahmed Best. Like the like the actor of Jar Jar was literally about to kill himself. Like, how in the world do you think it's okay to then do that to other people just because? The, the content you like is now protected by a toxic, angry mob. Again, I I love the prequels. We grew up with them. Love them. Prequel fans, toxic prequel fans are ruining it for me. I have a hard time even watching the prequels now. Well, and it's funny because I've seen it on Star Wars. It's, it's you guys all, ha or excuse me, on Facebook. You guys have all seen the meme where it's Darth Vader and the Luke Skywalker scene when he cuts off his arm and he's like, it basically goes down, and he's like, "No, you made Star Wars. Um, you're the reason Star Wars is toxic, or whatever." Mm -hmm. I, I I know we've all seen that meme, and it's so true. And, and that just it what's what's? Let me ask you guys: like, What's wrong if you don't voice your disgust for something? Okay, here's the thing. Sorry, no, no. What is the issue with shutting your mouth when someone else likes something you don't like? It you don't. You're, you, it's not your job to be like, hey, I don't like this. You shouldn't like it either. And here's why. If someone's like, I really like Ray. What's wrong? What's wrong with saying good for you? That's cool. In several, several accounts and stuff like that in the comment sections, someone will just like, I like the sequels, but I don't like everything about them. Someone thinks it's th th they're obligated to post their opinion as if it matters. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like people will be like, oh, well, I, you know, there, I had a lot of issues with the sequels and this. And it's like, who cares? that you had issues with these equals right well, just, just enjoy like, them you know, for what like, they hey that's cool that you liked them you know and if i don't like i don't like them so i'm not going to try to talk to you about them because i don't like them but if you want to have a discussion about what i did like about them, try to find the good in everything like yes again there's nothing wrong with voicing your you know your displeasure with something that's fine do it in a respectful way you don't got to call people shrills and you don't got to call people idiots and you don't got to threaten people's lives for the simple fact that they didn't like a sci-fi movie or that they liked a certain sci-fi movie that you didn't freaking like. You're an idiot. Um, but then let's, let's talk about, oddly enough, 
yeah, the sequels have, in my mind, a lot of things wrong with them. We'll go for a, little, a couple more minutes. Um, there's just a lot of things out there that I didn't like. Like, and maybe maybe we'll do a rant cast actually about about uh, about what we didn't like in them. Yeah, we'll I actually have to rewatch them again. Yeah, to, we'll have to go back and rewatch the details. Them. But it, it it's just like, <sighs> at the end of the day, I I think it's safe to say let's be better. Be Let's better, be, be better, better as fans. Um, you know, like one of my friends on Facebook, they're extremely into cos- uh, cosplaying Star Wars stuff. They're extremely into Star Wars. And I think even for them, um, they've seen this toxicity and they don't want it anymore. Um, you know, I think at some point or another, you just have to be like, enough's enough. Yep. Stop. Yep. I If there's so much toxicity coming from something that I can't even enjoy it anymore, then it's a problem and it's not even directed at me it's just seeing it it's just seeing, seeing it in passing that, because these people think it's fine to just keep doing that right like it's How, just like it's, it's so it's like oh my gosh okay we get it you don't like ray you don't like her character arc okay you like i'm sorry the sequels are the sequels they take place like 60 plus years after the prequels the prequels are done, gone and dead if you want the prequels go watch the prequels mm-hmm. these aren't the prequels it's not the ot it's its own thing you don't bump with it you don't vibe with it don't pay attention to it don't don't be here for it like no one's forcing you to like ray no one's forcing you to do this like don't subject to yourself to something it, you don't like exactly and it's just really funny like i've posted tiktoks and stuff like that and people are like oh good no sequel content no sequel content da, 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 da. 90% of the time I put when I post sequel content, it gets copyright claimed. Even when I put music over it, like different non-copywritten music over it, it still gets claimed. Like you don't want to post sequel sequel stuff. It's just that it's Yeah, cool. it's not that I don't want to. There's plenty of sequel stuff out there. And like like I posted one where it's like, you know, 10 top 10 best sounds in Star Wars and one was Rey's lightsaber. Of course and, and, it is. And every one. And everyone was like I don't hate, I don't like Ray. I think she's a Mary Sue and I think she sucks, but uh, I like her lightsaber. It's almost like a padding. Like, bro, if, you, a, if you like Ray, just say you like Ray. It's a double sided compliment. Like, yeah, I don't oh, like yeah, her. Yeah, you're right. Her lightsaber sounds great, but, but she's, but, but she sucks and she's this. And it's like, oh my gosh, dude, no one cares. If you don't I like something, pull up Billy Madison and just go, you know something? You suck. Right. You suck. <laughs> well, and it, it's just super simple. It's something I think that some of us, we're all raised on just because you don't like something doesn't mean you need to voice your opinion about it. Sometimes it's better to just bite your tongue and walk away. If you don't have anything nice to, to say, say, don't, don't say, say it at all. Don't say nothing at all. Like, it's just, oh, it's just such a weird concept. And it, it's just, it was not a weird concept. It's not a hard concept to grasp the simple fact of just stop. Like, why, why, like, what is that going to do? They're not, sorry. Here's the fact. They're not retconning the sequels. They're not going to redo the sequels. They're not coming out with some weird multiverse of, you know, of of different alternate versions of certain people. They're not. They're not going to do that. Why? Because it's too confusing for the younger generations to follow. Follow back to the, it was made for 12-year-olds. It was made for freaking 12-year-olds. You're, again, the Lord and Savior, Dave Filoni, even said that, yes, it was made for 7-year-olds. And how old were you when you saw it? Oh, well, I was, you know, 10 or 11 years old. Yeah. And why are you going to ruin it for someone else? Like, just because it doesn't fit your agenda doesn't mean that you need to ruin it for someone else. Like, there's... But that's why they do it. It's like, it's because it doesn't fit their agenda and they want everyone to know about it. They want to spill the milk everywhere. Exactly. And it's kind of like, like, Forrest, Forrest you, you and I can both, can both, um, can both go on about this, but it's just kind of like the whole thing of, oh, you're not a, re- do you, do you like Revan? Do you know, you know, what, what, what's, what's Revan's real name? You know, Revan, but you know, where, what's, what's his origin? Do you know this person? Do you know this person? Oh, well, if you don't, then you're not a real Star Wars fan. It's like, no, that's not, oh, no. Like that, if you, if you buy a t-shirt that says Star Wars, you enjoy a movie. You're a Star Wars fan. Yep. You're a Star Wars fan. Cut and dry. There's no black and white. Like, or, like no, I don't believe. I don't. I don't agree with that because I spent my entire life savings on Star Wars Legos. Good for you. No one told you you had to do that to be a Star Wars fan. Yep. Agreed. You did that because you wanted to. That doesn't put you in some sort of ranking higher than other people in Star Wars. I'm sorry. Star Wars is nerdy. It's geeky. It's 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 it can be cringe. Weird Anakin Skywalker cringe saying sorry, my lady. Well, and oh, it's crit. It's 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 it's, it's nerdy. Crazy. Like there's no there's no reason to think that you're above someone in Star Wars just because you 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 to to freaking Revan. Well, and okay. So on that note, when you say there's there's no tears, right? It doesn't just include liking Star Wars. 
and, and the toxicity of liking versus not liking something. Where are you going with it this? It goes all the way down into like, and I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. It's just part of it. Cosplaying. Don't judge someone's Star Wars cosplay because it's not as good as yours. Or it doesn't. We're not getting into that, Brady. Yeah. We're no, not, we're you're not right. Get, I'm just we're saying, not getting into don't that. Don't let this toxicity. <laughs> we're not get where, well, I know where you're trying to go with this. I know. We're I'm, not doing it. I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off, Brady. But, but you're good. You're good. But you're right. We're, we're not getting into that for the simple fact that's 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 a horse of a different color. That's a that's a different beast we're going oh, to be going up against. But anyway, I think that'll do it for this one. If you liked what you listened to, what you saw, be sure to subscribe. Links will be down in the description below my mouth blah, blah, blah. and uh yeah we'll hopefully be doing these more frequently brady booking himself out. i finally have this on the record brady booking himself out all the time and avoiding doing the rant counts because he doesn't like you guys it's over that's not true you guys are awesome i love you guys